Among the artists of the Baroque period, there is perhaps no one as well-known or as talented as Caravaggio. Known for his paintings of biblical scenes, especially the Gospels, Caravaggio made a name for himself by painting dramatic and theatrical works. His style is instantly recognizable, with its sharp, even unrealistic, contrasts between light and shadow, and his tendency to depict important biblical figures as ordinary, everyday people. But beyond mere technical skill, Caravaggio's works also display a clear understanding of the Christian message. Caravaggio himself was, to put it simply, far from saintly, but his paintings present us with profound moments of meditation, and they continue to inspire viewers down to the present day. One such work is The Incredulity of St. Thomas. Completed in 1602, this painting shows the scene from the 20th chapter of John, in which Jesus appears to St. Thomas and the other apostles, and says to him, Bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. The incredulity of St. Thomas is one of Caravaggio's most dramatic scenes, with light beaming down from heaven, enlightening each minute detail of Thomas's experience with the risen Lord. The primary subject of the painting is, ultimately, Thomas's finger, which is practically lodged within Christ's open wound. But that's not actually the visual focus of the painting. Rather, Caravaggio puts Thomas's face in the dead center of the canvas, in perfect profile, with heavenly light showing us the nooks and crannies of his stunned expression. It's impossible to see this image without being immediately drawn to Thomas, whose disbelief is overwhelmed by the reality of Christ's resurrection. But even as we take in Thomas's expression, our eyes are drawn away from his face, following his gaze to his own finger. There's an interplay between these two points, Thomas's face and his hand, which calls the viewer to look back and forth between them, in case we too have doubts. As our gaze moves from Thomas's face to his finger, we see the hand of Christ guiding his finger into the wound. Jesus isn't a passive character here, presenting himself for inspection or being tested by his own disciple. Rather, he is the one in control, appearing before Thomas and pulling him into the mystery of his death and resurrection. And as we look between Thomas's gaping expression and Christ's gaping wound, our eyes must pass over the hand of Jesus. The incredulity of St. Thomas is also remarkable in that it shows no obvious divine symbols around Christ. There is no halo, no cloud, no cherub holding his garment. He stands before his disciples as a person, fully man, fully embodied, fully tangible. It is not only the mystery of the resurrection that Thomas struggles with, but the mystery of the incarnation itself. Can this really be God? Can this man, whom I've known and lived with, truly be infinite? and all-powerful? Can this man who died truly come back in the flesh? Here, under the light of heaven, Jesus answers Thomas, yes, and let me prove it. Look for a moment at the wound itself. It is not an idealized red stripe as part of a sanitized crucifixion scene. Rather, Caravaggio drives home the tangibility of Christ's body through the folds of the skin around Thomas's finger, which is doing more than just feeling the exterior. There's an intimate physicality here, which is unsettling, and just plain body-like. The truth of the resurrection isn't shown through a beam of light or a holy aura coming from the wound. It's shown through the physical body of Christ, which is unmistakably human. Let's turn our attention away from the main action and take in the whole piece again. We can see that Caravaggio has placed all four characters in a small symmetrical diamond at the top of the painting. This placing gives the section beauty, but it also has meaningful significance. All four heads are gathered together close enough to feel one another's breath. All eyes are fixed on Thomas's investigative finger. They are all wrapped up together in pursuit of the truth, and they witness it together as one. Christ is among these men as one of them, not separate, standing apart, but participating with them in their discovery of his infinite love. Yet Christ's face is different than that of the apostles. His eyes follow the action, but he is facing the others while they face him. His purpose for being there is to present himself to his friends and to draw them closer to his love. His face is obscured by the shadows, perhaps hinting at the unknowability of God. He remains an endless mystery to us, even when he is visible and present to our very senses. This tension between mystery and tangibility is one of the great paradoxes of the Christian faith. It's evident not only in the Incarnation itself, 
where the infinite and unknowable God became a true embodied physical person, but also within the mystery of the Eucharist, in which Christ again comes to us in the flesh, visible, audible, tangible, even tasteable, while remaining infinitely mysterious. Jesus is also unique in the painting because he is the only figure without a furrowed brow. He alone knows himself completely. He alone is not perplexed by the glory of the resurrection. Meanwhile, the similarities between the apostles' faces, with wrinkled foreheads, darkened eyes, and stern expressions, all serve to show that Thomas is not alone. He's the only one whose hand is touching Christ's side, but his companions, Peter and John, are just as eager to examine Jesus as he is. So often, we look at Thomas as unique, as the proverbial doubting Thomas, who was the only one of the apostles to vocally express reluctance for believing in the resurrection. We forget that, not three days prior, Peter publicly and repeatedly denied Christ. John witnessed with his own eyes the excruciating, unmistakable death of the man before him. Even now, at this very moment, all of the apostles are hidden in a locked room out of fear. And yet we often think of Thomas alone as a doubter, as though the other apostles had no trouble with his earth-shattering claim. But here, Caravaggio shrewdly brings the other apostles into the scene, showing Peter and John being almost equally involved in Thomas's investigation. They, like us, can benefit from Thomas's experience with the body of the risen Christ. They, like us, want to see and touch and know beyond all doubt that their Lord is before them in the flesh. They, like us, must face their own doubt.